Theresa there. Well, I'm joined now by Robert Wright, who's the Professor of Economics at Strathclyde University and who specialises in demographics. Thanks for coming in, uh, Professor. The Norwegian economists and commentators in the package were astonished that when all this money was flowing in the, into the Treasury, that successive Westminster governments spent it rather than saved it. What was going on in Norway that wasn't going on in the UK at that time? I, mean, I think the key thing to remember is the Norwegian economy, or sorry, population is very small. It's less than 5 million. It's actually 300,000 less than the Scottish population, where the population of the United Kingdom is 62 million. Yet we had similar revenues coming in, but more demand on expenditure in the United Kingdom than in Norway. I mean, it was almost impossible for Norway you know, to spend the amount of money that was coming in. And that proved to be relatively easy in the United Kingdom, for example, paying for the high levels of unemployment in the Thatcher era, investing in the infrastructure of the country, and also rolling out the welfare state. I mean, so we spent this rather than saved it. The Norwegians had the opportunity to save it because mainly because of the scale. But was there not some way leeway to at least save some? Well, I mean, I'm sure that um, you can say you, they could have saved some, but how much? I mean, the thing is, I mean, we, we don't want to exaggerate how much money we're talking about here when we divide it through by, the, say, the population of the United Kingdom. I mean, per head, it's, it's a relatively small amount compared to the per head amount in, in Norway. And the, the Although it has to be said, this fund has built up mm. to this massive... Yeah, I mean, of money. it's massive, but also a, a country like Norway knows that this oil will run out eventually, and they are equally worried about their future. Now, their economy, because of this oil, in my view, has not diversified enough. Effectively, what they have is the oil sector, petroleum sector, fishing, bit of aluminum smelting, and that's it. The industrial sector is very small, manufacturing is very small, it's very uncompetitive. Okay, it's, it's very protected by the government. So again, where is the wealth of Norway going to come in the future when, you know, when this money runs out? It will run out some, some, some time down the road. And it'll be a long time down, down the road, but it will run out. And this is a concern. Let me ask you about what came out of the film as well, about this obligation that they seem to have to future generations, this cultural idea. That's not in our culture, it would seem, with our politicians. <laughs> no, not at the moment. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the pro so essentially what we have been doing in almost all higher, high income countries is that we're, we've been mortgaging the future. So the expectation is that future generations are going to pay for a, a chunk of the consumption that we're enjoying now. And we see, you know, we're seeing this kind of break with this mentality in the United Kingdom with uh, in the recent events where the expectation is that we, we're going to have to pay back this massive debt now over the next few years rather than, you know, place that debt on our children and grandchildren. Indeed, I mean, uh, I'm not, it's not clear to me that our uh, Norwegians are any more intergenerationally savvy than people in the United Kingdom are. It's just that they have a little bit more flexibility because they have this pot of money and they know it's going to last at least one more generation anyway. But it seems to they're able to hold the line on only spending 4% of this. There is some pressure for more to be spent on infrastructure, hospitals, education, but that doesn't seem to have popular support. So why are they able to hold the line as well on how much of it they spend well, year to year? Also, I mean, many of the discussions that we're having in the United Kingdom and have been having in the United Kingdom for the last decade, I mean, they're also having them in Norway. I mean, it has a very large debt, if you like, public uh, service debt, about 60% of GDP. So, I mean, it's not like a country that's, you know, the government has not had to borrow a lot of money to finance the welfare state. It has extremely high levels of taxation and it has you know, a wide range of universal welfare benefits. And there's a discussion, uh, similar to what we have here, whether or not they can afford you know, to pay this out in, in, into the future indefinitely, even with this big pot of money that they've accumulated because of this uh, freebie of oil in the North Sea. But it must be that they have a cushion that we do not have. Well, I mean, the thing is that they certainly have a cushion. It's just a matter of how long that cushion will last. Our cushion is definitely going to... Uh, be you know much shorter than theirs, but in the end there will be no oil left in the North Sea either for the United Kingdom and Norway, uh, and uh, you know we'll have to see what the situation is then. And I think I think it, I would just like to stress I think that you know oil is both a blessing and a curse. We have the discussion that we had in your your film clip, your film, and yet again it has stopped the Norwegian economy from diversifying, right? and they're worried about you know what their future is going to be like in the same way that we are. And finally, very briefly, is it too late? Even if we well, I mean, Changed our tack now. I, I mean, it's, 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 it's never too late. I mean, we, you know, almost, it almost goes by weekly. There's, you know, reanalysis of how much oil is left in, in the North Sea. You know, we know, we know there's, the technology is not quite there, obviously, for the deep, the deep well drilling, etc. But, um, 
Yes, I, I, you know, I do think, I mean, the government you know, is, is impressed upon us as consumers and as individuals, as, as parents, to save, and I think that they should also save themselves. And uh, again, this, there, there's other, other places around the world, for example, the, the province of Alberta in Canada has a heritage fund where they have worth about nine billion pounds at the moment. And, you know, they have been saving this okay. uh, since the 70s. We have to leave it there, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much indeed. A quick look at the papers before we go. The Times secret memo puts Labour on back foot over economy. It's saying the memo also shows Ed Miliband warned the coalition's cuts to public spending may not be much deeper than those proposed by Alistair Darling. And that is it from me for tonight. A very good night to you.